jump right into this, everyone. So today, the market is down to 1.8 trillion. Bitcoin dominance at 50.6. Let's back up. Um, a lot of red going on. If you've been here for a while, you're probably not as rocked by this because, as you can see, a lot of us have been on a bull run with a lot of things anyway. Um, if you're new, this can be really scary. Um, I look at it as a great time to buy stuff because these are basically discounts. You know, yesterday, well, I'm not going to highlight Dogecoin. Let me get away from that. But XRP, seven days ago, was 30% more expensive. That means you can now get 30% more for your dollar, which means you will make that much more money when destiny is fulfilled, which is coming up in the short term. You guys can follow me at True Perception 3 on Twitter. That's where I do most of the stuff. I'm actually going to pull back all the Facebook stuff. My inbox is, like, constantly blown up. I can't really deal with it. So um, you guys got to start coming over here if you want to catch up on all the stuff I'm talking about. Um, I wanted to take the time to make this video. is just about the basics, like what is cryptocurrency, what's the difference between cryptocurrency and stocks, stuff like that. And I'm going to just go over a couple of these. Um, the original goal for the creators of cryptocurrency was for crypto to one day become a currency that is commonly accepted as cash and credit. Many people now associate crypto with stocks, even though they are entirely different. Let's take a look at some of the differences between cryptocurrency and stocks. You can use this information, blah, 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 no financial advice, talk to an advisor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, difference one, what do you own? When you buy crypto, you own a certain amount of that digital currency. Someday it may be possible to use it in transactions as easily as other currencies, but today it's primarily a store of value that you can hold on to or sell. By comparison, stocks are offered by companies as equity and ownership in that company. I agree with what they're saying about stocks, but cryptos do have a lot more utility than just buying and selling and holding on to them, but that's for a different video. Another difference is the volatility. Both crypto and stocks can go up and down in value, so buying either one involves risk. However, crypto has gained a reputation for sudden and drastic changes, we just witnessed that, in value that can happen without warning. Stocks, on the other hand, are directly linked to companies that must publicly and regularly share how they've been doing and how they expect to do in the future. Investors can use that information to make informed decisions. Um, how they are governed is different. Federal agencies like the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission have authority over the entire stock market to protect fair trade. In contrast, as of now, there is no central authority regulating the crypto market. Remember that, guys. They're all kind of like fighting over who's going to be the one to lay down the law out here. That's part of this whole SEC versus Ripple thing, in my opinion, anyway. For each unique crypto, governance is distributed among those involved with growing and maintaining its technology. The hours of operation. Crypto market runs 24-7, 365. You'll see the price of cryptocurrencies change even as the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Eve. Stock market works full-time Monday through Friday, but takes nights, weekends, and designated holidays off. Um... This one went into some other things, too, that I thought was interesting. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Even though a unit of stock grants its owner a piece of a company, cryptocurrency usually does not. Um, cryptocurrencies are much easier to own than stock, even though most investors and traders do per purchase derivative of stock. The stock itself is not with the issuer. This means to properly own stocks, you cannot just purchase the asset on an exchange. You must make sure you get the actual paper stock. And usually, like TD Ameritrade, those types of platforms, that's all taken care of for you. With cryptocurrency, it's much easier. There's plenty of ways to trade cryptos peer-to-peer. -peer. Decentralized and non-custodial exchanges are becoming more common by the day. In less than 10 minutes, we can transfer assets from exchanges to private wallets. It is much faster and simpler with cryptocurrency than with stocks. That's a big thing. Security token offerings grant the owner an equity and a share of company. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that either because it just sounds stupid to me. Legal rights not worry about. The Howey test. This one is, is kind of important because this reflects on the Ripple thing. To, uh, let's see. Even though it's not essentially 100% accurate to use it for cryptocurrencies, it's the best we've got. And that's unfortunately true. And I think that's set to change any day. What the Howey test defines is whether or not an asset will be categorized as a security by the financial regulators. Simply put, the Howey test asks whether the value of a transaction for one of the participants is dependent upon the other's work. 
specifically the Howey desk determines whether a transaction represents an investment contract if a person invests their money in a common enterprise and is led to expect profits solely from the efforts of the promoter or a third party. Essentially, if an asset, digital or not, falls into any of the below categories, it will be labeled a security. If it is an investment of money, if there's an expectation of profits from the investment, if the investment of money is in a common enterprise, if any profit comes from the efforts of a promoter or third party. If any of these categories apply to the asset in question, it will most likely be a security and should be treated as common stock. This is all true about the Howey test, and I could be wrong here, but I have a little bit of experience with law, and typically when you're trying to, like with the Ripple case, typically when you're going to try to, like, label something a security, usually you have to fully meet criteria with law. It's usually not a single element that would designate you that way. In my experience, anyway, usually all elements have to be met or it's, it's scratch, but I could totally be wrong. Um, and for this last one, I got, this is a visual explanation of blockchain, and I, I thought, I looked at this earlier, and I thought it was really cool, and I know a lot of people are like, well, you know, what the hell is blockchain? I don't even understand, like, this Bitcoin and crypto. I know it gets really confusing. There's so much being talked about, and so we're just going to go over this. It has some really cool graphics that I think will be helpful to a lot of you. A blockchain is a database that is shared across a network of computers. Once a record has been added to the chain, it is very difficult to change. To ensure all the copies of the database are the same, the network makes constant checks. Blockchains have been used to underpin cyber currencies like Bitcoin, but many other possible uses are emerging. Records, records are bundled together into blocks and added to the chain, one after another. The basic parts are the record, which can be any information, such as a deal, a transaction, whatever. The block, which is where it's all stored as a bundle, and then the chain, where they are all linked together. Here's how, to get, how a deal gets included in a blockchain. Step one, a trade is recorded. For example, let's say Mr. Pink is selling two of his coins to Mr. Green for 100. The record lists the details, including a detailed signature from each party. Here we go. Let's see here. There you go. Mr. Pink and Mr. Green swap $100. Uh, the record is then checked by the network. The computers in this network called nodes check the details of the trade to make sure it is valid. And like some of these cryptocurrencies have like tens of thousands of nodes worldwide. This isn't like just a couple computers hooked up. I mean, it is pretty massive, the uh, infrastructure behind this. You know, so everybody has now validated the information showing that it is correct. So the margin of error is, I, I don't want to say non-existent, but it's, it's small. Step three, the records that the network have accepted are added to a block. Each block contains a unique code called a hash. It also contains a hash of the previous block in the chain. It's a pretty cool little graphic. I'm going to run that again. So, like, if we're all buying crypto and we just so happen to be do, buying the same crypto on the same block, we would each be one of those little squares going onto the hash and everything there. Step four, block is then added to the blockchain. The hash codes connect the blocks together in a specific order. And what's cool about this is they can go so far back, I mean, to the very beginning on the blockchain and look at all this stuff. It's, it's really cool. Hash codes keep records safe. Hash codes are an example of encryption, which is a way to scramble the contents of any file so that only those with a digital key can decode it. Let's take a closer look at the two important characteristics of hash codes. First, Hashes are created by a math function that takes digital information and disguises it as a code of letters and numbers, which is always the same length. For example, the first tweet from Jack Dorsey was much shorter than War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, but they would generate hashes of the same length. <clears throat> Second, any change to the original input would generate a new hash. So if someone decided to delete just one comma from the... Tolstoy's, what is that, 587,287 word masterpiece, it would show up because the hash would then change. So, yeah, when, when these changes get made, like if somebody goes in and is like, oh, we're going to delete this or move this, like a whole new thing is generated and, and all those changes can also be followed. 
there's a lot of transparency there. You, you do have some like privacy technology out there that kind of gets around some of that, but that's that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, the change hash breaks the chain. The next block in the chain still has the old hash. So to restore the chain, a hacker would have to recalculate that and the next and so on. Recalculating all those hash hashes would take an enormous amount of computing power. And this stuff already does. Uh -oh. Mr. Green's on that creep. Excuse me, I had to take a drink. Yeah, these, these visualizations are pretty cool. The computers in the network. Unlike traditional ledgers, a blockchain database is decentralized and has no master. <clears throat> a centralized hub is an authority is held by a central node. Decentralized networks, all the nodes can access the information and compete to be the next to add to the database. Permission to join. Without a centralized control of a network, trust is a problem. One answer is to only let people you know, such as company employees, join in. But blockchains, such as the Bitcoin network, are open to anyone. Members are anonymous. There is no way to know if they are trustworthy. To resolve this and build trust, excuse me, these blockchains set tests for the computers that seek to join and add records to the chain. These tests are called consensus models, reaching a consensus. The test requires network members to prove themselves. Here are some examples. Proof of work, which by the way, does not work. To add a block to the chain, nodes must demonstrate that they have done work by solving an increasingly difficult computational puzzle and using massive amounts of power. This process, called mining, uses a lot of computing power. In return for their work, members can receive rewards, tokens, for instance, or bitcoins. That's pretty much your original proof of work there. What well, is the original? Proof of stake is a, a newer one. It's similar, but that's where a lot of the proof of work ones are going. I think it's a little more efficient. Participants buy tokens, which allow them to join the network. Then the more tokens they have, the more they can mine. You can, you know, stake them kind of like Coinbase. Like you can stake uh, Algorand and earn, you know, 6% APY on your tokens. Possible uses. There's a lot of hype about blockchain, but some promising uses are under development. Cryptocurrencies. Blockchains are the basis of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Banking, XRP. Financial institutions have been investing in blockchain to simplify their records for keeping payments. You also have XLM and XDC are three that are very promising in this sector. Supply chain, VeChain for one. Recording trades on a blockchain offers a way to check the history of a product. For example, jewelry companies hope it can assure customers that diamonds are not from places that could finance war. That's pretty cool. Uh, healthcare, Hedera Hashgraph, known as HBAR, they're handling all the COVID stuff, the passports, the testing results, all that. I'm, I'm definitely very bullish on them. Uh, you guys should check them out. They're backed by like Google, Boeing, like all kinds of people. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull Hedera Hashgraph. Let me just pull them up. Normally, I don't hop on the fly like this, but we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, voting, and what's cool is a lot of these tokens now have built-in governance, so if you hold their tokens, you actually get votes when all this stuff is being changed in the code. So, you know, you do have a, the ability to have your voice heard a little bit. Uh, and property records. Storing land records on a blockchain could cut down on costly title research and insurance in politically unstable places. It could also help prove ownership. And they have, like Ethereum and all that, have these smart contracts which I won't get too much into that, but those are gonna be huge in real estate because there will be no more 30-day closings and all that once these are incorporated. You mark my words on that. Um, so yeah, that's a breakdown on what blockchain technology is. Back over what I was saying to Hedera, just, I mean, just look at who these people are partnered with. I'm not gonna get all into it. And they are actually not a blockchain technology. They are called a hash graph technology, which it, it runs in a similar way, but it is different and is newer, and they tout it as much more efficient. We will see, but I know Boeing's here, Deutsche Telekom's here, Google's here, IBM's here.
standard banks there. I mean, LG, these are heavy hitters, man. Like IBM and Google alone take all the rest of these off of there and then sprinkle in a little bit of military super tech. I mean, I'm all in on that. Um, and one last thing, I just want to show these are the domains I have available for sale. Um, most of them are on auction. I'm also selling some of my photos as NFTs. And once these are sold, you know, only there's only one copy of this that can ever be in existence. So it, it's it, it's a pretty unique digital file. And I once I sell them, I'm not going to sell them to anybody else. Like they'll stay on my social media and stuff like that. But you will be the only owner of the actual file, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Other than that, make sure you guys go and give me a like on all the videos. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, get a friend to hop on here. Leave some comments if you've got any questions, suggestions, if, if my voice sounds like crap, if I'm talking too fast, if I'm taking too long, if it's boring, if you have some subject matter you want covered, you know, just bring it on. I, I, I want to help everybody just learn about this. I realize as I've been making my journey through all of it that, like, so many people are talking to me and you guys have a lot of questions, and a lot of them, to me, it blows my mind that these are questions, but I feel like the vast majority of people really are genuinely curious to a lot of this stuff and don't understand it. So that's really what my channel is about. I'm not trying to come on here and say, buy this, sell this, watch out for this. I, I talk all that stuff, you know, just in my daily, but this channel is really more about just educating, and I want you people to be comfortable you know, with blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies in general, I want you to feel good about going on to Uphold and putting your debit card on there and spending $500 on XRP every time you get a chance because that's what I think people should be doing. That is not financial advice. That is just, you know, get involved. And I guess that's going to do it, guys. Uh, like the videos, subscribe, and, yeah, I got a new microphone coming on Monday, so my voice will sound a lot better, and I'm slowly starting to format these videos a little bit, so I can kind of boom, boom, boom through them. I want to get them down to under 10 minutes, so you guys don't have to listen to my beautiful voice for too long. Guys, have a good night. Talk to you tomorrow.